Welcome to the Bouldering Progression Series. These videos are designed to help guide you through your journey and development as a climber on the bouldering walls. The series is split into several parts, with each part addressing a certain stage in your bouldering skill level. We'll go over the requirements needed to competently climb at a specific grade range. We're now in the last intermediate stage, where we'll be tackling hard V5s and V6s. This is the turning point in indoor bouldering where beyond this level, fitness starts to be a heavier factor than technique. Undoubtedly, smooth climbing will always increase your chances of sending, but developing strength will give you more opportunities to implement your skills. This video will go over some of the more advanced techniques, as well as fitness components. But first, let's start with some unique hole types. We've already covered the majority of hole types in the past few videos. Here we'll go over the not so common holds you'll see on intermediate and advanced boulders. Pockets can be very intimidating to look at. In the rock world, these holds conjured up images of gnarly climbs like Action Direct or Perfecto Mundo. As pockets can only fit a small number of fingers, sometimes just one, you must be very careful in how you use them in order to prevent injury. The best way to start conditioning your fingers for pockets is to train the open hang or three finger drag. This technique uses the index, middle, and ring fingers in a full hang position. Carefully incorporate this hang into your fingerboard practice or start using it on small holds on your climbs as opposed to half crimping or full crimping. When you begin using pockets on a climb, remember to combine your two strongest fingers, either the index and middle or middle and ring. Test out these two combinations to see which one suits you best. Some other unique holds you encounter include shapes like blocks, noodles, and volumes. For blocks, the best way to use them is to utilize the sharper edges on the corners. Turn your hands with fingers facing sideways and use a technique called a meat hook. This allows you to cup the corners and clamp down. Noodles are a bit tricky because it's a lot of hold but very little friction. The key to using them intelligently is to think ahead about body position. These holds are often best leveraged in the side pole or undercling angle. And remember, you can always use the edge on the flat tip of these things. Volumes are the big ray blocks you see in competitions and modern gyms. Because of the size and shape, there are many different ways to use them. One key thing to always look for are screw-ons. These are small holds attached to the volumes to create a better point of friction at certain spots. Always check for these in advance so you know where to aim for. A dead point will be the most important technique you'll learn in climbing. It's applicable in many scenarios and is usually the key factor in unlocking a hard move. The technique involves generating a bit of momentum, dynamically going towards a target hold, and latching it at the body's hover state, when it is no longer moving towards or away. This is extremely useful in cases where the hold is in a position that's almost impossible to achieve statically by locking off. To practice a dead point, start on vertical terrain with good holds. Move towards each hold in a slightly dynamic fashion and grab it with as little force as possible. This drill is called soft touch and lets you practice your timing to achieve handholds in hover state. Once this becomes easy, switch to steeper terrain to increase the level of body tension. Use a bit of compression and expansion with your body to help with generating momentum. This means moving slightly away from the target hold before moving towards it. Start increasing the distance between handholds, and eventually work your way to smaller holds. One of the agonies of harder bouldering is the awkward start. Whether in the gym or outside, sometimes it just feels impossible to even pull off the ground. When you're climbing indoors though, realize that these problems are set by people, and they always have a solution in mind. If you're feeling stumped with an awkward start, you can apply the general principle of opposite hand and foot. Look to see which hand you'll need to do the first move. 
If it's the right hand that's moving, you'll have to initiate off the left hand and its counterpart, the right foot. You can also do this the opposite way. If the problem presents an obvious right foot to start, you'll know that it's very likely the first move will be made with the right hand. Remember that bouldering has a built-in high attempt and high failure rate, so don't be discouraged if you can't figure out a start quickly. Keep experimenting with different methods and you'll eventually start to narrow things down. We've all been told not to cut feet when climbing. It's something that only bros do and signifies a lack of grace and control. But sometimes cutting feet is a smart option. Not only does it make a hard move easier, but it also saves you energy. If you're going to cut feet, there are a few things you should know to help you do it properly. One, when contacting the target hold, make sure to have your shoulder engaged by depressing the scapula. This will let you take the force of the contact in your muscles rather than on your joints. Two, grab the hold with a slightly bent elbow. Bending the elbow will shorten the lever of your body and reduce any big swinging. Three, if you're gonna swing, do it once with style and immediately reestablish contact with the wall. Find a foothold and make it stick. In this intermediate stage of bouldering, power endurance starts to be a factor. This term means exactly how it reads, which is your ability to sustain a higher number of powerful moves. Contrast this with local endurance, which is more common in sport climbing, which measures your endurance for doing easier moves in a steady aerobic state. At our climbing gym, the route setters take advantage of our high bouldering walls to set some long problems. Some of these climbs have more than a dozen moves, which exceeds the movement count of traditional boulders. Although most of these moves can be easy enough to do individually, it's linking them up that proves to be the challenge. To help you develop the power endurance for these long climbs, you can practice this drill called Up Down Up. This is a short circuit that links a moderate climb up, an easy down climb, and a moderate climb up again, all without touching down to rest. For example, if your flash level is V5, you can climb a V4 up, a V1 down, and the same V4 up again. Make sure the total move count of all your up down up climbs is between 20 to 25 moves. Do this for 3 to 5 sets at a climb to rest ratio of 1 to 2. That means if it takes you 2 minutes to do one cycle, you get to rest for 4 minutes. Steep climbing will be the second component of your fitness training. This is an area that many people tend to avoid because it's quite physically demanding. However, neglecting to train on overhangs will only hurt you in the long run. Not only will you have an imbalance of climbable grades on different terrains, but you'll also be missing out on the technical and physical benefits that come with steep climbing. While vertical and slab climbing emphasize edging and can be heavy on the quadriceps, steep climbing is mostly about the power of the toe and your posterior chain. The tension generated in the overhang position comes from the pressure exerted by the toes. The harder you press, the more your hamstrings and glutes are activated. This elevates the hips and keeps a good connectivity with the wall. Remember, tension in climbing is created by applying pressure to your contact points. It's not about just flexing your abs. If you want to improve your steep climbing, focus on applying pressure through the toes while you move through each position. Also look for opportunities where you can turn your hip in and position your body closer to the wall. Incorporate five or more burns on the steep wall in each practice and you will soon become a fan of the overhang. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Congrats on making it this far in your bouldering journey, and I hope you continue to stay motivated for what lies ahead. If you have any questions about techniques or training, please feel free to comment below. Until next time, move better, climb harder.